And we're back with a little bit of Rift Breaker. And today we're not doing anything too strenuous. Well, we're not doing anything too strenuous. The computer will be doing something a little bit more strenuous though. What we're doing is we're just going to test out on a sort of a cheated colony exactly how much it takes to cause a computer to cry. Uh, this was raised by some people in the comments going they had issues running this game where too many mobs showed up and their computer would just slow to a crawl. So what we've done here is we've opened a sandbox mode we have loads of resources. There's infinite resources, so you can just keep harvesting this stuff. And for example, a carbonium ore there never runs out. And then we have built this enormous base full of maxed out turrets with maxed out research, maxed out everything, just to see what happens when waves of just stupendously large sizes show up. So, we have just built the last headquarters upgrade. Uh, let's see what shows up to try and kill us. Looks like they're all coming from the that side of the map. Let's, uh, let's have a go teleport over. Yeah, there's a lot of baddies over here. Oh, wow, that's, that's way too many. Let's just retreat back to our defenses. And there goes the artillery turrets. And let's see what happens over here, actually. Three, four, five, six, seven, and yeah, you know what's with an eight as well. Where's our gravity grenades? Oh, gravity grenades are on three. Dear Lord, I love those gravity grenades. They do terrible things to the frame rate, but they are beautiful. Just the, the big blobs they make of everything. Oh, they suck everything in and just turn it into an absolute mess game is definitely not liking that. I can feel the game chugging just a little bit, but not as bad as I was anticipating. Let's go maybe check out the other section down here. How are they doing? They haven't even really got to our real defenses, uh, though I suppose this thing is completely cheated over built in. Oh my god, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay. And, oh, I love the way it sucks up all the gibbs and just spins them around in circles. Oh god, that is beautiful. It even sucks in all the stone chunks. Oh, oh, don't kill us. We're here to watch the fireworks and all the pretty things get chucked about the place. <laughs> oh, damn it. We died, but yeah, you can see that I love the, the swirling effects. And the computer's still handling it quite nicely, actually. Eh, where were we? Oh god, there is just so much. I think there's some spiders over there. You can tell by the annoying... Uh, where are those spiders? They need to die. They're messing with our defenses. Go, oh, oh. Run away, run away, run back to the walls. It's the only place that's safe. Though I do love the enormous amount of resources you get. Uh, the uh, When you're doing this, you get an enormous amount of resources just from the corpses that show up. Everything that dies drops resources, and you can see the glow there. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is just so much resources. We also have an absolutely stupendous amount of uh, mods just from doing this. Anything left? Ah, oh, there's something over here. Uh, let's see what the next raid has in store for us. I'm just going to go around and hoover up some of these resources. It's the only thing keeping us alive is the actual resources we get from killing all the mobs. Have you ever seen a high caliber rifle with three homing mods inside it? It leads to some weird scenarios, like it curving around in circles and doing figure eights. Not exactly uh, amazing quality, but you know what? It, it's fun to look at sometimes. Also, it does weird things. Uh, but then again, the minigun is still far, far, far better. Ah, excellent. More of them showing up, though they're attacking a very lightly defended outpost over here that we don't care about so much. That's fine. We'll just uh, spam down a bunch of stuff, and hopefully they won't kill us too quickly. <laughs> oh my god, those gravity grenades are just amazing. I should have really researched those a lot quicker in the playthrough. Dear lord, the mess this makes, though. Uh, did we die? Oh, no. Come on. Ah, ah beautiful. Though, yeah, the, oh, wow, the power's about to go here. Yeah, let's maybe get out of here. I think leaving would be a good idea before we end up getting mobbed. There's way too many mobs that show up for you to even think about holding them off. You just, you have to have some sort of centralized base with an absolutely incredible amount of turrets. The, the amount of ammunition it takes to fuel all of these, considering the amount of things you have to kill, you actually have to come out here and harvest all the resources. Otherwise, you can't, uh, you can't actually keep your gun turrets fueled. Even with infinite resources, eventually you just run out of stuff to power your armories to provide weapons and, or provide bullets for all your guns. Unless you want to go exclusively with um, energy-based weaponry, though I'm not sure how well that would work. Oh my god. Yeah, now, this is the kind of stuff they should use in the advertising campaign for this game. 
<laughs> yeah, let's throw a few grenades and mines and everything in there. Yeah, yeah, that's totally helping the frame rate, all those grenades. <laughs> oh, repairs. Oh my god. Hey, stop trying to hit me with those green balls of death. Wait a minute, I have a couple of grenades here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. No, never mind, we're dead. So yeah, this is what attacks look like when you do something stupid, like remove all the restrictions. Uh, this is set on a by 5 multiplier for all attack waves, and every attack wave, attack, a new attack wave hits every 5 seconds. That's why they have gotten so ridiculously out of control. Though, without infinite resources, there's no way you could survive long enough to really get to this stage. My god, there's just so many. And so much resources. Look at it, just fields and fields and fields of resources. The only problem is there's some you can't get. You can get plenty of rhodonite, you can get plenty of um, ah, the blue stuff, cobalt. <laughs> Animal biomass in the in the oodles. But there's a few of the more tricky resources to get. Where is it? Yeah, tanzanite. Don't get any of that. Hazonite, I only got that from going around the place. And ferdonite. But everything else, like, uh, oh, titanium you can harvest on this map. Palladium you can find in this map. Rhodonite you can pick up from the critters. But uh, anything else? Tough. Hey, what's left over here? There's, there's still some red blobs, is there? Where are you? Oh, no, I think it's a bugs, is it? Yeah, it's the... Oh, never mind. No, there's plenty left. Yeah. God damn, those gravity grenades are just amazing. Yeah, let's start up a few more of these gravity grenade things. There we go. Mmm, delicious. Now a quick tutorial on how to make a hot whiskey. Uh, bearing in mind I'm not a doctor and I don't know how helpful this really is, but it works for me. Uh, you're going to want whiskey, lemon, cloves, honey, and a big thick heavy glass. Uh, first things first, two slices of lemon. Skewer them with three pieces of cloves each. Why? I don't know why. It's tradition. Just go with it, okay? Then you want to take that heavy glass and you want to fill it full of water. Make sure the heat soaks all the way through. Toss that hot water out. Put in more hot water just to make sure that thing is boiling hot. You want that glass toasty. You don't want any of that uh, chill leaking into your drink. Then you want to put in a blob of honey. I, I like a generous amount of honey here, to be honest. It, it helps coat the throat. It helps with the sore throats and all that stuff. Then you want to pour in your whiskey to taste. Then after you've poured in your whiskey, you immediately, immediately, immediately want to start putting in the hot water. Remember that you're fighting against temperature here. The longer this takes you to put together, the colder the drink is going to be. And you're trying to make a hot whiskey, remember? Well, a hot toddy, if you want to call it that. Then once you fill it up the whole way, give it a bit of a stir to make sure all the honey, the lemon, and the whiskey, and the hot water all mixed together to give you a nice syrupy drink that's going to help soothe your throat. How do you know if you've made a good hot whiskey? Well, it will be hot. If it's hot, it's good. If it's cold, you've messed up. Either you didn't heat the glass enough, or you put in too much honey, or you put in too much whiskey. You're going to have to, you know, you know, figure out your measurements there. Immediately after you get it made, you want to drink it. Like, you want to drink that thing in about 10-15 minutes, brush your teeth, straight to bed. You will sleep like the damned. You will sleep like you have been anesthetized. And then you should wake up in the next morning feeling like you've had a good night's sleep. And that usually helps. It's all the tossing and turning at night. And not getting that good night's sleep that usually hurts you with the cold. Plus, this will make sure you've got a nice soothed sore throat and that vassal dilation is supposed to help. I don't know. Works like a charm for me. Yeah, your mileage may vary. Anyway, enjoy. Also, not a doctor. <laughs>